Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Thursday of the second week of Easter. It's a wonderful 50-day festival, isn't it? It's so nice to be with you, so you tune in about various topics of our faith. It's so important to, just, to discuss this, to communicate to you, and to be with you in your homes, especially in the time that we're socially distancing ourselves. But it's important to know our faith and to have that faith renewed in each of us. Sometimes we learned all of this when we were young, and I don't know if we always remember, if we could articulate it, or we had various questions that we need answered, or it's just nice to have a refresher. You know, have a refresher. So we've been talking about Easter, we've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, we're talking about the Sacrament of Confirmation how to be a witness to Jesus Christ, both in word and deed, as committed Christians. It's important. Are you involved in the life of the church? Are you a member of the pastoral council, finance council, worship committee? Are you a lector, an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion? Are you an usher or a greeter? Do you help with various ministries or organizations or fundraisers? Are you part of the living church? the living church, because you're alive, but more importantly, because Christ is alive. So I invite you, I invite you to take advantage of your baptismal and confirmation promises, and I invite you to engage in the life of Christ, in the life of his church. Don't sit down and don't expect somebody else to do it. Jump up to the plate, hit a home run for God, no matter what it is, no matter what you do, you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you involved in a music group? Are you a cantor, a musician? Do you have a musical talent? All of these things, I think we can really think about how each of these parts build up the body of Christ as a witness as a witness, are you part of the Legion of Mary? That's a fantastic group. I, I encourage you to be part of them, to learn more about your faith and talk about witnessing. They go out and witness. They go to nursing homes, they go to prisoners' houses, they go to the houses of the newly baptized. Witness. Now, you may ask them, aren't you afraid sometimes? Yeah, but we pray. We ask the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Hey, listen, we're baptized and confirmed Christians. This is our responsibility. You know, we see Jehovah Witnesses do it. Why can't Catholics do it? What's wrong with the Catholic Church that we can't do it? You know, <clears throat> the people need to be empowered. So if you belong to St. Mary's Parish, I empower you. I empower you. Be part of the Legion of Mary. Go out door to door and visit and witness to, your, uh, to the faith. Seriously take advantage of it. That's a powerful group. They're evangelizers, grassroots evangelizers. So, but there's many things, prayer groups, Bible discussions, all of that in the life of the church. Do you want to be a catechist to teach the faith, help in our, our prep program? Do you want to volunteer in our Catholic school? Listen, come to me. I'll tell you everything that we do. I'm only listing a few things, and look how much I've listed already. We have a St. Joseph group here. There are men that go to daily mass that do odd jobs. They're retired men who come to daily mass and do little odd jobs, whether it's fix a table, whether it's help Peggy with the flowers. We have another group that just waters the flowers. There's a lot of things you can really be involved in. Allow the spirit to breathe in you so that you can witness to your faith, both in word and deed as committed Christians. I think it's important. I think it's so important. And be a witness in your own household. Do you pray at home? 
Do you have the children and people around you pray before the meals? Do you have a religious, religious objects on the house? Do you know, like, do you have a, a crucifix, statue, holy water, all these things? So Susan, share with everybody, you know, what we have. Maybe they'll, you know, they, they'll want to, um, you know, pick up something. I mean, you don't have to show them now. You could like put it right on the screen. I can. Airdrop it or whatever that is. I don't even know what these words are, but I mean, you could you could do that and say, because we have, um, we have religious items here at the church. Mm -hmm. We have something right by the piano. You could purchase that and take it home and use it. We have something in the vestibule of the church for communion and confirmation. Beautiful. You know, they're gifts, right? You know, during this COVID, people are not going into the back room or the library or the ERC room. So they want to pick up something. So whatever you ask, we have it ready for you. God bless Peggy. She puts it all out there. She takes care of it. She replenishes it. She answers people's questions. But you just go take a look at it. That's another way to witness to the faith. And I mean that because I'm saying, you know, pick up a candle, give it to somebody. That's, that's important. Say so here, I bought you a candle, light this and, and start praying each night before you go to bed. Here, I, I bought you a holy card, I bought you a medal. Here, I got your child a, a religious book. I want you to have it. You're evangelizing. You're evangelizing. Here I brought your, your child a First Holy Communion gift or a confirmation gift. It's these little things. Everybody wants to be a Mother Teresa. They think they have to be a Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa says, no, just be whatever your vocation is. You be that and do it well. Okay, Mother Teresa. That's right, if you're a married man or a married woman or a high school kid, you do that. That's your vocation right now. You're not called to be a Mother Teresa. You're called to be whatever you are in your state of life. Do that well. Witness to the Catholic faith. Don't hide in seclusion. Don't put a basket under yourself. Don't put masking tape over your lips. Don't be embarrassed. Grab something and offer it as a gift to somebody. It's these little things. Say, how are you? God bless you. How's your mother doing? I heard she was sick. How's your husband? I heard that he's in the hospital. I'll remember him in prayer. It's these little things witnessing to the faith. Whether they're Catholic, whether they're Protestant, whether they have no faith, it's beautiful that we witness to the faith, isn't it? So confirmation is all about a witness, a witness to the faith. And that Holy Spirit so powerfully comes to us in the sacrament. So you know, on November, not November, what am I saying? April, on April 24. 24th, we're having the Sacrament of Confirmation here. Bishop Senior is going to be the minister of the Sacrament of Confirmation at 10 a.m. and another Mass at 1 p.m., April 24th. It's a Saturday. And so we'll have the candidates, the young parishioners of our parish receive the Sacrament of confirmation, to allow them to witness to their faith, to be powerful and bold proclaimers of God's truth, to put it into action, to profess and live the faith that we all believe. That's so important today, don't you agree? It's so very important to do that. And they'll receive it on April 24th, the laying on of hands the anointing of chrism and the form of cross. 
Even the name, do you ever notice that the, they're, they're giving a name? See, because it's attached to baptism. They could use their baptismal name as their confirmation name. Or they could use a name of a saint that they want to live out, how to witness. Maybe you, you read about a saint and you said, look how they witness to their faith. I want that name. I want the name Paul. I want the name Claire. I want the name Sebastian. I want the name Michael. Whatever it is, I want to take that name and I want to emulate that person by witnessing my faith because I, I read about that person. Or they could take their own name, their own baptismal name. It's, it's this identity. You're identifying with a, a saint. You're identifying with a person who has witnessed already. And they're your cheerleader. So that name is important because it's also a completion of baptism. So the name, your baptismal name, your confirmation name. Sometimes when I say that to people, they'll say, what do you mean? Because you're always so used to like first name and middle name. <laughs> I don't use that. I'll say, what's your baptismal name? They're like, what? What's your first name? Oh, Michael. What's your confirmation name? Then they give it to me. But then I say to them, do you have a double baptismal name or a single baptismal name? That throws them off. Because they're thinking of like first name and middle name. So I said, no, do you have a single baptismal name or a double baptismal name? It makes them think, doesn't it? It's like, no, I thought your name was Thomas Michael. So you have a double baptismal name. See, I don't have a double baptismal name. I only have a one, I only have one single name for baptism. Lewis. My confirmation name is Paul. Now, some people might have Thomas Michael David. Thomas Michael is their baptismal name. They have a double baptismal name. And David is their confirmation name. So in the early church, they would have those double names because it happened at the same ceremony. What happened at the same ceremony? Baptism, confirmation. Thomas, Michael. So look, the, look your confirmation name up. Read about that saint. Try to take some of those qualities to empower you to be a witness of the faith by what you say and do. God bless you, everybody.